What's up, everybody? It's your boy Ryan, and this is El Channel de Thandora on Nootropics. Thanks so much for being with me. So I'm going to talk about every single nootropic, and then I want to explain them. I want to give you guys a whole list of the roster of chemicals that we typically talk about that are in the sort of classical nootropics list. I'm going to give you their dose ranges and their mechanisms of action. And I may miss a few, et cetera. Like I'm, I'm, I'm really referring to the things that I consider in my 15 years of using nootropics and consulting people on nootropics and brain performance to actually be nootropics. Okay, so we're going to get to that. In the meantime, support us live, Cortex.com. We have a nootropic of our own. It is called Cortex. On the market for six and a half years. Very powerful for entrepreneurs and productive people, but anyone can benefit from it, especially nootropics enthusiasts. It's usually dubbed legal speed because it's very, very powerful. Clean, stimulant energy with Cortex. Get it at livecortex.com. Uh, if you get the subscription element of it, you will get Smarter, Better, Faster for free, which is a digital downloadable guide that teaches how to surgically use nootropics. If you're new to nootropics, brand new, right out the gate, Nootropics Ground Zero is where you have to be. It's a video course that will take you to the three-year mark in sort of expertise in getting results with nootropics. Mid-level, wanting to ascend to the six-year mark, Nootropics Masterclass is where you have to be. Another video course. Highest level nootropics course on the planet, on the web, that exists today. The 10 to 15 year mark expertise in using nootropics is the Nootropics God course. Another video course of yours truly, and you can find that at livecortex.com. Lastly, if you'd like to work with me, you don't wanna do the courses, you'd rather just have me formulate your daily regimen, your energy regimen, your sleep regimen, your testosterone regimen, and a variety of nootropic stacks. Your nootropic regimen, very targeted toward your brain, your two options are either a three and a half month consult or a six month consult. These are one-on-one, -on -one, hands-on, results-driven brain and energy engineering consults, working with yours truly. Just let me formulate everything. Okay, so let's discuss every single nootropic stack. So let me give you a little background about me if you're new to the channel. I've been into nootropics for 15 years. I've used them to build multiple companies. I got into them uh, really after starting meditating and recognizing, wow, I could change the performance of my brain just with meditation. But what else is possible? What else can I do? That led me into, I think the first nootropic I tried was, yeah, it was a stack. I think it was paracetam, alpha GPC, Alcar. And honestly, it was rad, but I didn't know how to use nootropics back then. And so the stack became inconsistent and whatever that I eventually learned to cycle and put together all the stuff that you see in our courses. But 15 years later, I still use nootropics. Not every day, probably four times a week, sometimes five times a week. I cycle on the weekends and sometimes I'll take like an entire week off completely. But largely they changed my life. I mean, they give me a lot more productivity, a lot more focus, a lot more motivation, a lot more energy, clean stimulant energy. They can relax me when I need to. They can help me sleep. And pretty much everything in between. Very useful tools to have in the arsenal. So for those of you that want to hear a list of 42 nootropics, I've got 42, their dose ranges and exactly what they do, wait no further. All right, let's start from the top with the racetams. Number one, adoracetam. The dose range on adoracetam is 200 milligrams to a gram. Adoracetam is basically a compound that, uh, in terms of effects, will give you some light stimulation, help your working memory, and put you in a place where focus may be easier. Uh, for, for other folks, multitasking is easier on adoracetam. It really depends on how you respond to it. Generally, good, clean energy with some memory. That's what you're getting out of it. Uh, obviously, it stacks with other things, but we're not talking about that in this, in this particular video. Uh, the mechanism of action of anoracetam is multifold. One, it's forcing the hippocampus to release more acetylcholine, which should help on the memory side of things as well as the focus side of things. At the same time, it's positively modulating a uh, glutamate subtype receptor called the AMPA receptor, which is fostering LTP and helping you have better memory. That's anoracetam. Number two, oxyracetam, kind of a cousin cyclic derivative of GABA. Very, very powerful focus nootropic compound. Dose range, 200 milligrams to a gram. And again, there's various use cases for all these nootropics, which we're not gonna get into in this video. And we have thousands of other videos and a bunch of other content and courses to teach you how to actually use these nootropics surgically. Uh, oxyracetam, what does it do? It primarily gets you focused. It can give you degrees of motivation. It can enhance your verbal fluency. It definitely, for most people, enhances working memory, functional memory, but largely it's a focus compound. Its mechanism of action 
also is releasing acetylcholine in the hippocampal areas of the brain, as well as fostering better function of the AMPA receptor, again, fostering LTP and memory. Number three, paracetam, classical. Some of you that are brand new probably heard of paracetam and maybe that's where you started. That's the original racetam upon which the rest of the racetams essentially were built and modified. They were modified from original paracetam. Uh, paracetam, the dose range on paracetam is 400 milligrams to four grams, okay? What it generally feels like, what it should feel like, is a little bit of motivated energy, some, some better mental processing speed, a uh, little bit more focus for some people, verbal fluency, and generally kind of a clean, stimulating feeling. Not overpowering, to some people not that noticeable in terms of stimulation, but noticeable in terms of memory and better processing uh, capacity. Um, it's doing a lot of things, right? It is forcing you to signal acetylcholine and use it better in your brain, which is give you focus, motivation, verbal fluency. It is allowing the hemispheres, your brain hemispheres, to communicate better with each other through the threads in between them that send information from one hemisphere to the other. It's called the corpus callosum. Paracetam actually helps that communication happen better. It's also helping you to make more or get more oxygen and blood in your brain. Very, very powerful compound. Number four, phenylparacetam. Phenylparacetam as a very stimulating, energizing racetam. The dose range is 40 to 250 milligrams of it. Effects, it's really like the aphanils of, uh, of racetams. Like it, it just turns on stimulant energy much more potently than most of the other racetams. What it's doing is it is a mild dopamine reuptake inhibitor. So it's keeping dopamine around for you to use for longer, for the acute period that you know the paracetam is affecting your brain. But at the same time, it's forcing you to release acetylcholine, a common theme across racetams. Uh, people that go to the gym use it. It's a great pre-workout. I mean, people, it's like banned in various competitive sports because it enhances physical performance, likely via the dopamine reuptake inhibition and the cholinergic uh, activity enhancements that are then sort of, uh, you know, broadcasted outward to your physical, you know, capacity. Number five, pramiracetam. Pramiracetam, another racetam, been on the, you know, been on the roster for many years, again, a derivative ultra, ultimately of original paracetam. The dose range is 30 to 200 milligrams. 30 to 200 milligrams. And what pramiracetam is primarily doing is fostering high affinity choline uptake. It's a little different from the other racetams. It's, it's upregulating, if you will, or making the, the function of high affinity choline uptake better, which is just a process by which your brain takes dietary choline and turns it into brain usable acetylcholine, okay? A focus and memory neurotransmitter. That's pramiracetam. Number six, coloracetam. Pretty similar in its mechanism of action. Uh, dose range five to 50 milligrams. You take this, you know, you take coloracetam at a, at a pretty low dose because it's very potent. And what it is doing in a more potent way than pramiracetam is, which requires higher doses, is again fostering choline uptake, high affinity choline uptake so that your dietary precursors of choline, like eggs and beef and fish that have choline or foods that have choline, beef liver that has choline or choline supplements and making you make acetylcholine better and more efficient with those precursors. Number seven, fasoracetam. Fasoracetam, this is the last racetam that we're gonna talk about. Fasoracetam is a calming agent usually, right? I mean, for most people, that's the best use case they're gonna get out of it, relaxing your brain. The dose range is five to 80 milligrams, five milligrams to 80 milligrams. Its primary mechanism of action is upregulating the function of receptor sites at the GABA B side, the GABA B side. Now it's, it's causing you to release and use acetylcholine a little better than usual. So it'll, it'll allow you to function better cognitively, but mostly it is kind of calming down brain activity in a way that gives you smooth, calm focus. Okay, so those are the racetams. Moving on to compound number eight, the choline sources. Number eight, CDP choline. 
Dose range 20 to 250 milligrams. 20 to 250 milligrams. Now, what CDP choline feels like is an energizing, stimulating, motivating, verbal fluency-esque state. It kind of tends to turn on all of those things. It's one of the bioavailable precursors to brain acetylcholine, and it also has some interesting positive effects on dopamine receptor sensitivity, which is really, really awesome. Uh, that is CDP choline. Number nine, alpha GPC, kind of its brother in the choline precursor arena. Very interesting compound dose range, 20 to 250 milligrams. Now I know some of you may have seen people taking 600, 800 milligrams of these compounds and usually uh, th that type of person or that template is, is, is rare. They are in the minority. I would know that having worked with men for many, many years on this and being in the nootropics for such a long time, a lot of the larger scale studies on compounds like this are actually with people that are 60 and above with major cognitive decline. So of course they're gonna require higher doses. But the average person trying to benefit from compounds like this does better on lower doses. Uh, what does alpha GPC feel like? Mild stimulant, right? You'll get some better processing, better memory, better focus. That's really where it's at. Like when you sit down to do work after taking alpha GPC, you should be able to notice that your brain is functioning better in that work. But it may not overstimulate you, but that's totally fine. Uh, DMAE is number 10, dose range 20 to 100 milligrams, 20 to 100 milligrams. What DMAE is doing is it is taking peripheral choline from peripheral tissues in your body, allowing it to cross into the blood brain barrier and affect brain chemistry, and then binding to cholinergic receptors. That's ultimately what DMAE is doing. So it's not a precursor, it's just sort of borrowing choline from other areas in your body, call it, and then shuttling them to the brain to bind to cholinergic receptors, which again will give you focus, memory, some verbal fluency, maybe even some motivation. Number 11, it's, it's more bioavailable form, which is called centrophenoxine. Centrophenoxine is essentially DMAE on you know steroids it's like it's it's more powerful you need l lower doses of it ultimately uh centrophenoxine's dose range is 20 to 200 milligrams because you actually can dose it high but it's got to be put together really really well in an intelligent nootropic stack and again what it's doing is in a more absorbable more a more effective way it's taking uh, peripheral choline and allowing you to have that choline become acetylcholine and bind to cholinergic receptors in the brain. Okay, number 12, Alcar. Alcar. The dose range on Alcar or acetyl L-carnitine is 200 to 1,000 milligrams. Okay, 200 to 1,000 milligrams. Uh, what does Alcar feel like? Alcar is very energizing. Alcar makes you want to do work. Alcar puts you in a place where you want to do stuff that you've probably been putting off. What it's primarily doing is it is allowing you to shuttle fatty acids from your system into the brain, crossing the blood-brain barrier to affect brain cell mitochondria, essentially for the purpose of energizing mitochondria, ultimately giving you energy. It's also donating part of its chemical structure to the synthesis of acetylcholine. So you have a little better acetylcholine function when taking Alcar. Number 13, dynamine. Dynamine, sounds like dynamite, very powerful compound, energizing compound, stimulant compound. Dose range, 40 to 250 milligrams. What does it feel like? Well, it feels like caffeine, but cleaner. It feels like very strong caffeine effect, but uh, without the jitters, without those sort of funky side effects, just sort of gives you a clean stimulant feeling by itself, very powerful. What it's primarily doing is allosterically modifying adenosine receptor. What it's doing is it is modifying the function of the adenosine receptors, ultimately leading to a, a wakefulness outcome, like a wakefulness effect, and sort of a sleep inhibiting or a tiredness inhibiting effect. Very, very powerful compound. Number 14, teacrine. Very similar in that you know these compounds are part of the sort of methylxanthine class. They actually come from the caffeine plant, the, the caffeine molecule, and certain types of plants they grow to a certain stage where they're caffeine, and then there's a certain point at which uh, a chemical change happens in the plant, and then the plant 
turns into teacrine, right? It becomes teacrine at that point. So it's structurally very similar to caffeine and in terms of effects, it's very similar. Dose range on teacrine is 40 to 250 milligrams. What does it feel like? Pretty energizing, clean stimulant. It'll get you to do stuff that you've probably been putting off. It's like, it's like an anti-procrastination nootropic compound. Very, very powerful compound. Uh, mechanism of action, again, similar to dynamine, working on the uh, adenosine receptor side of things, allosterically modifying it, blocking them from the time being, allowing uh, your wakefulness to sort of supersede your tiredness, clean stimulant energy. Number 15, theobromine. Theobromine, another energizing uh, nootropic compound. Dose range is 20 to 80 milligrams, 20 to 80 milligrams. And by the way, there are a lot of really cool ways to stack theobromine with other compounds. Again, nootropics masterclass, nootropics god course, even nootropics ground zero, those are courses where you actually learn how to stack that compound really, really intelligently. Uh, what does it feel like? Mild stimulant, right? Clean stimulant, different than teacrine, dynamine, and most other stimulants. It's sort of a light stimulant, but you definitely notice it. Get you to work, get you to focus, gives you brain energy if all the things are correct. Number 16, L-tyrosine. L tyrosine. Dose range on tyrosine is 100 milligrams to 1,000 milligrams. Okay, so 100 milligrams to a gram on L tyrosine. What does it feel like? Energizing, stimulating. It's more of a classical stimulant than a lot of the stuff that we've talked about. So take tyrosine in the right doses for you, and you probably feel like pretty stimulated, right? Like you've had some coffee and then some. Drink it with coffee, then you really have something powerful. It'll get you to work, it'll give you mental energy, it'll put you in the place where you want to get things done. Primarily what it's doing, it is, is, it is making you build more dopamine. That's one thing. But importantly, it's making you build more noradrenaline and adrenaline. And those are alertness-based chemicals. So they'll put your brain in a place where energy is a lot easier. Tyrosine is a very, very powerful compound, not for the faint of heart. Number 17, not, not, otherwise known as N-acetyl-L-tyrosine. So it's a derivative of tyrosine it's acetylated so that it crosses the blood-brain barrier, and ultimately you require lower doses of it than regular tyrosine. Dose range, 50 to 250 milligrams. What does it feel like? Well, not feels like tyrosine. <laughs> very, very energizing, very stimulant-like. I mean, if you just want a couple hours of like a jolt to your energy, so that you know if there's productivity or stuff that you need to engage in that you don't have the energy to, to work on right now, take not. That's ultimately uh, what it will do. Similar mechanisms of action in creating more dopamine, more neuroadrenaline, and more adrenaline. Those are the catecholamines. Number 18, onto the aphanils. Number 18 is adrafinil, adrafinil. Dose range on adrafinil is 100 milligrams to 450 milligrams. Now people can take a little bit more than that, but again, these dose ranges are what I've seen be most successful with people using nootropics, consulting people over many years on using nootropics. Uh, what does it feel like? Wow. Completely different than anything we've talked about so far. Very energizing, clean stimulant. It almost makes you feel like your most optimal self but you know, you're 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 on a nootropic. Like you're not <laughs> you're not that way typically. You wish you were. But when you take a drafinol, it's almost like, wow, this is how I should feel. It's not overly stimulating. You know, it's not a dopamine stimulant-esque feeling like you'd get from a pharmaceutical drug or whatever. It's just, you feel more like yourself. Very, very clean and very, very functional. Uh, what it is doing is a couple things. It is forcing you to release more dopamine. It's fostering the function of the erexin system in your brain, okay, in a way that pretty much shuts off tiredness and keeps you awake in a way that's much more powerful than caffeine or any analog. It's just a very, very powerful compound. I mean, if you think about it, compounds like this were actually created, adrafinil and its analogs, for narcolepsy. So it shuts off sleep, it shuts tiredness off. Not for the faint of heart, very, very powerful compound. Number 19, regular moda, regular moda, modafinil. Okay, uh, the more powerful version of it, prescription only, uh, modafinil is an extremely, extremely powerful compound. Dose range, 40 to 200 milligrams. 40 to 200 milligrams. What does it feel like? Pretty much the same, but even better than a drafinil. Cleaner, 
on that sort of making you feel fully like yourself and just giving you good brain energy and motivation and focus to get things done. Again, mechanism of action, working on dopamine release and then fostering the function of the erection system to keep you awake and to block all ounces of tiredness that may exist at the time. Number 20, armodafinil. Armodafinil, so a more biologically available analog of regular modafinil. That's really all it is, requires lower doses. Dose range, 30 to 100 milligrams. Again, the effects, very powerful motivation, wakefulness, clean stimulant energy, feeling more like yourself, you can get a lot more done, probably even be a little more verbally fluent. And um, that's pretty much it. Again, working on the same system that the rest of the afinils are working on, just with a different dose range. Number 21, L-theanine, L-theanine. Dose range, 50 to 1,000 milligrams, 50 to 1,000 milligrams. What does L-theanine feel like? Well, it's a very relaxing nootropic compound, right? It sort of puts you in a place where focus is easier if you wanna work, especially stacked with other compounds like caffeine or even some of the racetams or uridine, a bunch of other compounds it, it stacks with. Uh, but ultimately, what it is doing is allowing you to have higher concentrations of GABA and serotonin in your brain. So it's actually affecting brain serotonin and GABA. That's what L-theanine is ultimately doing. Very, very powerful compound. And again, you can dose it low with some stacks that are energizing and use it as a balancer, or you can dose it high by itself as an anxiolytic, an anxiety-reducing compound. Number 22, glycine. Glycine. Some of you that have been on the channel for a while, you go, glycine? You talk about glycine, Ryan? Well, yes, uh, dose range, three to five grams. What it feels like, uh, very calming. In fact, at nighttime, if you take it, it's, it's pretty sleep inducing. It can actually help you sleep better throughout the course of the night because it's an amino acid, but it is doubling as an inhibitory neurotransmitter. That's primarily what it's doing in your brain, right? So it's controlling the potentially excessive firing of other neurotransmitters that would like keep you awake or keep you anxious at nighttime or prevent you from getting good sleep. I do think glycine, is an interesting compound. And in lower doses, even though I just said three to five grams, you can actually stack it in 100 to a couple, you know, 300 milligrams, call it, with stimulant-esque cholinergics and get a potentiated response. Very, very interesting stuff with glycine. Number 23, picamillin. Picamillin. Dose range on picamillin, 100 to 400 milligrams. What the hell is it? Well, picamillin gives you a very relaxed kind of effect. That's the effect of picamillin. It's it's chilling, it's calming, chilling. Like we're watching a horror movie or something. It, it just sort of chills the brain out, right? And that's because primarily what it's doing is it's allowing you to have brain available GABA in a way which no other compound in the nootropic roster can really achieve because it's synthetically bonded with a B vitamin to cross into the blood-brain barrier and actually give you brain-available GABA. Very, very powerful compound and picamillin. Number 24, rhodiola. Rhodiola, a lot of you have probably heard of rhodiola. It's an adaptogen. Dose range is 100 milligrams to a gram. 100 milligrams to one gram. What does it feel like? Well, taken by itself, it's pretty relaxing. It's pretty chilling. At the same time, it sort of makes you respond to stressors throughout the course of your day a little bit better, right? That's what adaptogens do. So to put you in a place where responding to stress is easier and ultimately it should relax you from your baseline. Uh, it's got all kinds of mechanisms of action and they're very complex for this video, but suffice it to say, it's working on the function of serotonin and serotonin receptors as it relates to some of the calmness. And it also lowers resting cortisol levels slightly, which can have a relaxing effect. Number 25, Tulsi Holy Basil. Tulsi Holy Basil. The dose range of Tulsi Holy Basil is 200 milligrams to a gram. What does it feel like? Tulsi Holy Basil feels like uh, it's clearing your brain. It kind of gives you a brain clearing effect at the same time, somewhat of a relaxation effect. Now it's doing a lot of different things. It is a mild cholinesterase inhibitor. So it'll allow you to keep acetylcholine in your brain a little bit longer and, and you know, sort of marginal quantities which should affect brain function. It's a potent, potent anti-inflammatory chemical, but ultimately it's working to sort of chill you out, clear your brain, and chill you out. 
Number 26, uridine monophosphate. Very, very powerful compound, uridine monophosphate. Dose range, 30 milligrams to 250 milligrams. What does uridine feel like? Powerfully energizing, powerfully motivating, right? You get powerful focus from it. It can even give you very, very good verbal fluency. It can even help your working memory. It just feels like a super nootropic because it is. I mean, uridine is a very, very powerful nootropic compound. Um, what it's doing, wow, uridine is doing so much, but as it relates to the effects that you're gonna get, what it's doing is sensitizing the response that you get from the neurotransmitter dopamine. Right, working on the receptor side, sensitizing the response. At the same time, it's a major, major constituent, if you will, of neurogenesis, the process of spawning new neurons. Like in baby's formula, you know, for, you know, products for growing brains, and even mother's breast milk, again, for growing brains, there's a good concentration of uridine in it because it'll actually grow your brain. Very, very powerful compound. Number 27, 9-MEBC. 9-MEBC. Those of you that have been in the channel for a while, like, oh, I know that one. I love that stuff. Very, very powerful nootropic compound. Really classified as a research chemical, but used in the nootropics community. Dose range, 10 to 60 milligrams. 10 to 60 milligrams. Primary mechanism of action is the resensitization of dopamine receptors, many of them, as well as your resensitization to the stimulant response. So taking 9-MEBC for certain periods of time with an intelligent strategy should resensitize your response to other stimulants, meaning other stimulants will actually make you feel more stimulated again. Like if they've lost potency, 9-MEBC is a great strategy to bring them back. Number 28, bromantane, bromantane. Dose range, 10 to 80 milligrams. Very, very powerful compound. What, is, what does bromantane feel like? Clean stimulant energy, clean focus, Right? It just sort of gives you this uh, feeling like your brain is very resilient. And whatever it is that you're engaging in, you first have the energy to do it, and secondly, you're kind of into it. Because primarily what it's doing is helping you synthesize, meaning make from precursor, more dopamine. It does that by upregulating the function of dopa decarboxylase and tyrosine hydroxylase. And these are dopamine conversion enzymes. Very useful compound if you want to get surgical with dopamine repair. Bromantane, and also very stimulating, not for the faint of heart. Don't take it too late, it'll probably disrupt your sleep. Number 29, PRL853. PRL853, dose range, 2.5 milligrams to 10 milligrams. 2.5 milligrams to 10 milligrams. And by the way, if you're curious on how to weigh that out, weigh out 10 milligrams, split it in half, then you got five, split that in half, then you got 2.5. Ultimately, what it's doing is it's fostering the functioning of acetylcholine in a way that really no other nootropic can match, leading you to a place where working memory specifically is a lot better, like remembering a bunch of numbers in your head. Not that anyone has the job to do that or that's someone's primary, you know, primary mission in life or even task at work, but everything that we do when we're working, if we're entrepreneurs or if we're data people, financial people, IT people, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, in some of those situations requires working memory. PRL-853 boosts the heck out of working memory. Number 30, and I sort of debated about whether or not to put this on the roster, but as far as I've seen and what I've been able to use it for with clients, as well as myself, I classify it as a nootropic, and that's nicotine, nicotine. Dose range is two to four milligrams for nootropic purposes. What does it feel like? Mildly stimulating, right? Can give you a little more focus, a little more motivation, but primarily, it'll, it'll enhance your processing speed and working memory. That's primarily what it's doing, essentially because it's binding directly to cholinergic receptors, which are responsible for those types of brain function. Number 31, old school, but not to be forgotten about, sunifuram, sunifuram, okay? Dose range on sunifuram is five to 10 milligrams. What does sunifuram feel like? Uh, I would say mild, Mild stimulation, ultimately, you really don't notice this sort of, ex any sort of excessive stimulant effect from it. You basically just process better for a short duration of time. Call it like one to two and a half hours is really the max you're gonna be able to reach with Sunifuram. It's not a very popular compound, not many companies have it, but it's cl considered a, a classical nootropic compound. Uh, it's enhancing AMPA function in your brain. Um, and then also, 
I, I think it's doing that via glycine binding sites of NMDA receptors. So it's like it's got a, a different mechanism of action than a lot of other compounds, somewhat similar to the other ampicines like racetams. Ultimately, it should give you working memory. That's ultimately what it should feel like and better processing. It, it's actually an anti-amnesic, which is really interesting. Its brother, number 32, Uniferam. Uniferam, very similar compound. Dose range is the same, five to 10 milligrams. Very similar mechanism of action, but there's some research that suggests that it is also fostering acetylcholine release. Again, it makes you sort of feel like you're just functioning a little better above baseline, right? Not powerfully stimulating, but you're processing which people need to sort of pay attention to when they're taking nootropics. Everyone's looking for like this excessive stimulant or something. And that's cool. There's compounds for that. But what about improving processing and functionality? Sonoferam and Uniferam allow you to do that. Number 33, phenylalanine. Phenylalanine. Dose range, 100 milligrams to one gram. What does it feel like? Clean stimulant, very comparable to tyrosine and very comparable to NALT because essentially that's what it's doing. It's doing the same sort of things, right? It's, it's allowing you to make more neuroadrenaline and adrenaline as well as synthesize more dopamine. So it's, a, so it's an energizing kind of short-lived but powerful stimulant effect. Number 34, caffeine. <laughs> caffeine, had to include caffeine. 30 to 250 milligrams on the dose range. Uh, obviously various use cases for caffeine. Uh, caffeine is an uh, adenosine receptor antagonist that uh, that basically, for all intents and purposes, shuts down tiredness, right? It'll tone down the tiredness that you have. It's not actually giving you energy. It's maybe allowing you to notice the energy that you have, but it's blocking tiredness. That's what caffeine ultimately is doing. Number 35, Hooperzine A. Hooperzine A. Dose range. Very, very important for you to listen to this dose range. 40 micrograms, not milligrams. 40 micrograms to 250 micrograms. What it feels like, uh, pretty intense focus, pretty intense working memory, maybe some folk, maybe some motivation on top of that and like some energy, but ultimately it will get you to a place where focusing on stuff is easier and you actually sort of have an intense level of focus. That's Hooperzine A. Mechanism of action. What it's primarily doing is it is allowing you to accumulate more levels of acetylcholine, this focus and memory neurotransmitter in your brain. Because it basically acts as an enzyme, uh, well, it acts as a compound to prevent the breakdown of acetylcholine via this enzyme called acetylcholine esterase, okay? So it's blocking acetylcholine esterase from taking brain levels of acetylcholine and breaking it down, ultimately to be recycled for later. So it's keeping it around for a period of time. Uh, not for the vein of heart, should not be dosed every day and should be dosed very carefully. <clears throat> Number 36, alpha lipoic acid. Yes, ALA made the list of all nootropics. Dose range, 50 to 250 milligrams. What does it feel like? Not very stimulant like, brain clearing. Brain clearing. First of all, it's a massive antioxidant. Number two, it actually gives you brain available glutathione. That's like the master de detox chemical. And it's a mild, very mild acetylcholine esterase inhibitor. So it's working on acetylcholine function in your brain at a very, very mild level. That's alpha lipoic acid. Number 37, vinpocetine. Vinpocetine. Dose range, 10 to 60 milligrams. What does vinpocetine feel, feel like? Uh, I would say mild stimulant, but mostly brain clearing. So that when you're you know, sitting down to do work, your, your brain is just less inhibited. And why you feel like that, its primary mechanism of action is to give you more brain available oxygen. It's fostering oxygen and blood uptake and functionality in your brain. Very, very unique compound in that regard. Number 38, Nupept. Nupept, extremely powerful compound, very, very popular nootropic compound, been on the roster for years. Many people use it around the world. Very, very safe. Uh, dose range, five to 25 milligrams five to 25 milligrams. So you don't have to take a lot of Nupept, guys, there goes my cats again, perfect timing, to get a very powerful effect. Uh, what does it feel like? Working memory, mild stimulation, focus, a little bit of motivation, verbal fluency. Very, very powerful compound. What is it doing? Fostering the expression of brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which is a repair, reparative chemical, if you will, as well as increasing the efficiency with which your brain is signaling the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. A lot of these compounds work on that neurotransmitter. A lot of nootropics do. 
Number 39, NAC, NAC, totally inotropic, otherwise known as N-acetylcysteine. Dose range, 100 milligrams to one gram. 100 milligrams to one gram. Now, NAC is doing a lot of things, okay? It makes you feel a little more motiva motivated. For some people, it enhances their sex drive. Again, depending on sort of what else is going on on the, you know, the neurotransmitter side, also on the testosterone and then progesterone and estrogen side of things. Um, but it sort of just gives you a brain clearing effect and a mild stimulating effect and even a mild motivation effect, primarily because what it is doing is helping you to synthesize more dopamine, working on, the, the, again, those, those same enzymes that bromantane is working on, dopa decarboxylase, tyrosine hydroxylase, uh, allowing you to synthesize and ultimately make more dopamine. It's actually, there's a lot of research on NAC suggesting that it, it should be part of a dopaminergic restoration protocol. At the same time, it upregulates gene function, gene function in the hypothalamus and fosters better functioning, especially in the presence of some sort of insult of the hypothalamus in your brain, which is very important to have functioning really, really well. Number 40, we're getting to the latter end here. Artichoke extract, artichoke extract. Very, very interesting compound. First brought on the board really as a, a classical nootropic by the guys who made Siltep, now called Neurofuel, I believe, natural stacks. Dose range, 100 to 800 milligrams. What does it feel like? Energy inducing, right? Not potently, but semi-potently, right? I would say it's more potent than some of the other energy compounds that are just sort of subtle, right? It's not that subtle. You definitely notice the energy if you got the dose right and if you're stacking it with the right other nootropic uh, compounds. What it's primarily doing is making your brain produce more energy, like literally on the camp side of things, intracellular camp. It's fostering that process for brain energy production. Number 41, Bacopa, Bacopa Monieri. Dose range, 200 milligrams to a gram. What does Bacopa feel like? Pretty mild. You know, it's really more of a long-term chemical that you would take to get benefits from. It can relax you in the acute phases if you're taking 300 to a gram of it or something. Um, and that's, that's pretty much what you get. What, what it's ultimately doing is it's a mild acetylcholinesterase inhibitor. So it'll give you a little more usable acetylcholine in the acute period. So again, you'll function a little better when taking it acutely. But ultimately, over time, what Bacopa is doing is it's a number of things relevant to us. It is fostering the projection of axons and dendrites, neurite outgrowth effectively, from neurons, right? Neurons communicate with each other through these branches called axons and dendrites. And what Bacopa has been shown clinically to be able to do is extend the function, extend the, you know, extend the strength really, and even make you branch out more axons and more dendrites to have better neurochemistry signaling. Number 42, this is the last one that we're going to talk about. And again, I'm not going to get emails and comments like you missed like seven or 10 or whatever. These are just the ones that I classically think about as nootropics and have used over the years. Dihexa, dihexa, okay? Very, very powerful neurogenesis inducing compound. It, it is primarily for repair work. Now look, it'll make you cognitively function better when you take it, but it, it's more used, I've seen it best used with clients in a longer term sort of reparative restorative strategy on brain and chemistry. Dose range 10 to 80 milligrams. 10 to 80 milligrams. And again, its primary action is working on neurogenesis. It is trying to repair whatever it recognizes in your brain. Um, that's dihexa, very, very powerful compounds. So that, my friends, is 42 nootropic compounds explained, both for their dose ranges and what they do. Now look, I can make an entire other video that is also 40 minutes long right, of how each of these compounds could be stacked. In fact, that would be an hour and a half long. And, and pretty much I, I, I have already done that in Nootropics Ground Zero, Nootropics Masterclass, and Nootropics God Course. But maybe I could figure out a way <laughs> to synthesize that into one free YouTube video and I'll be thinking about that in the meantime. What is the point of this? Well, it's to give you an idea of, you know, first of all, the dose ranges, what these compounds are doing, so that importantly, you can know what to use them for, what to use these nootropics uh, for, 
And then ultimately, so that you have sort of a visualization, if you will, of the major nootropic chemicals that you can be taking to optimize cognition, to optimize motivation, to optimize focus, to optimize energy, to optimize drive, to relax you, to help you sleep better, to make you respond better to stress and everything in between, okay? Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope this has been helpful. It's been great talking with you. We're having a great day. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. So if you just came and you like what I just said and you like information, free information about nootropics, but surgically on this channel, how to use them, that's what we talk about, how to get very specific states of brain function, how to repair certain elements of your brain, how to get yourself to focus on cue, be motivated on cue, on and on and on. Please subscribe to the channel, share the channel on social media or with your friends. Hit the bell if you're subscribe but don't get notified of our videos or something and if you just subscribe please hit that bell so you get notified of all our future videos we pump out endless amounts of nootropics related and biohacking and neurohacking and energy hacking content on this channel thanks so much for being with me again go support us live cortex.com i mean look a lot of what we talked about just now i can expand upon and you can learn a lot more in in a practical application where you're actually getting brain performance benefits from it uh number one if you're new to nootropics, nootropics ground zero. That's where you have to begin. Get that course. It's a video course that lays out so much of this and way more. Many stacks. How to actually stack this stuff together. Very powerful for beginners. If you're in a couple years with nootropics, but you want to ascend to the six-year mark. And by the way, beginners can get this course too. Get the nootropics masterclass. That's sort of the mid-level range in expertise of using nootropics. Six-year mark. If you want to ascend all the way to the highest levels of using nootropics, you can do that too. And you can do that from the beginning. You should probably watch Ground Zero first and then get the God Course. But if you have or you're in between and you already got an understanding of nootropics, get nootropics God Course. Highest level course on the planet when uh, discussing how to use nootropics in a way that really, really gets you good brain performance. Lastly, if you'd like to work with me, you don't want to do any of the, you know, watch any of the videos, you'd like me to formulate your energy stack, your daily regimen, your testosterone stack, your sleep stack, but more importantly, your nootropic stacks. Cycle them appropriately for the goal of getting you to fire on all cylinders. I mean, this is my job. I'm usually the guy that gets the call from the big banking executive or the entrepreneur in Silicon Valley that just needs eight, 18 hours a day of brain performance right, or 14 hours of exceptional brain performance, needs to rotate between very effective targeted nootropic stacks. Work with me, we've got either a three and a half month option or a six month option. Those are one-on-one, -on -one, hands-on, results-driven nootropics and energy programs where you're working directly with me to formulate everything. So if you're a business person primarily or an entrepreneur or an IT person, somebody who's got the budget and wants to function at 150% in all these areas, get one of those consults. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Talk to you next time.